Hi, I'm Nicola and I'm going to be delivering this module on an introduction to carbohydrates and the Freestyle Libra. So a little bit about me. I'm an adult diabetes specialist dietitian working at the University Hospitals of Derby and Burton NHS Foundation Trust. I'm a Daphne educator, the Freestyle Libra lead and the dietetic leads for insulin pump and continuous glucose monitoring. So by the end of this module, you should be able to identify the source of carbohydrate in the diet, explain the effect of carbohydrates on glucose levels, recognize how glycemic index affects glucose levels, understand how carbohydrate counting can help you to manage your glucose levels, and finally, understand how you can start to use the Freestyle Libra to assess your carbohydrate counting skills. So carbohydrates are a main food group in people's diets, and they can be split into two groups, starches and sugars. Sources of starchy carbohydrates are foods such as bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, cereals and grains. Sources of sugary carbohydrates come from foods which have added sugars, sucrose, or the natural sugars found in fruit, fructose, or dairy, lactose. It's crucial to understand where carbohydrates come from in the diet, because carbohydrates have a direct effect on blood glucose levels. When we eat a meal or snack containing carbohydrates, the body breaks this down into glucose or sugar. This glucose then enters the bloodstream and causes a rise in blood glucose levels. The body cells need glucose for energy. Insulin is a hormone, which makes it possible for the glucose to be able to enter the body's cells from the blood. We often refer to insulin as acting like a key to unlock the cell door and let glucose in. In someone without diabetes, this process would happen automatically. The pancreas would produce the right amount of insulin in response to the carbohydrate eaten to keep the glucose levels within a very tight range. However, in someone with type one diabetes, it is possible to take insulin in a way to be able to choose what and when you want to eat. You do this by taking quick acting insulin based on the carbohydrate that you are eating. And this process is called carbohydrate counting, which we'll be talking more about later on. So the more carbohydrate you eat, the higher the rise in glucose levels, but it's not just the amount of carbohydrate that matters. It's also important to consider the type of carbohydrate. Not all carbohydrates behave in the same way. Different sources of carbohydrate are digested at different rates. They can be ranked according to the speed with which the glucose rises after a particular food. This is known as the glycemic index. Foods that cause a short, sharp, fast rise in glucose levels, those that are quickly absorbed, are referred to as high glycemic index carbohydrates, whereas those foods that cause a slower, steadier, and more gradual rise in glucose levels are referred to as low glycemic index carbohydrates. It's important to note that the speed of absorption is affected by a number of things, including which foods are eaten at the same time, in particular, the fat and protein content of a meal. Adding fat and protein to a meal will lower the glycemic index of the carbohydrates and will cause a more gradual rise in levels and reduce the spike that you may see after eating. Cooking methods can also play a part. Just because a food might have a low glycemic index doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. For example, a chocolate bar would have a fairly low glycemic index because of the fat content. It won't cause the, uh, the glucose levels to rise particularly quickly, but it will raise the glucose levels over several hours as the carbohydrate is absorbed more slowly. So it can be useful to think about glycemic index in relation to whether quick acting insulin is needed. Foods and drinks such as fruit juice, cola, leucoside, glucose and dextrose tablets, or boiled and jellied sweets are perfect for treating low blood glucose levels or hypoglycemia. However, if these foods and drinks are taken on their own when the glucose is in target, they will cause a rapid rise in the glucose levels, which is often too fast for your quick acting insulin to be able to match. Therefore, we recommend trying to limit these foods and drinks to hypo treatments or to prevent hypos or in the management of activity. You may also want to include them with or shortly after a meal so that you can match the carbohydrate with your quick acting insulin more effectively. On the other hand, low GI foods cause a minimal rise in blood glucose levels. Things like lentils, beans, pulses, nuts, barley and grapefruit, 
Although they contain carbohydrates, they don't tend to push the blood sugars up too quickly. Therefore, if you match the quick-acting insulin to the carbohydrate content of these foods, it can cause the blood glucose levels to drop before that carbohydrate is absorbed, which can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. Therefore, we recommend not covering these foods with quick-acting insulin initially, but to monitor the effects. In large quantities, you may need some insulin cover. All other sources of carbohydrate can be matched with your quick-acting insulin, whether they are more slowly digested, like seeded bread, or more quickly digested, like white bread. So now we know about where the source of carbohydrate comes from in the diet, and that different sources can have a different effect on glucose levels depending on the glycemic index, let's look at how we can use that information to manage glucose levels through carbohydrate counting. Carbohydrate counting is working out the correct dose of quick-acting insulin according to how much carbohydrate you're eating and the current glucose value to maintain target glucose levels. It does take some time to learn this skill and does require a bit of maths. However, it does lead to greater improvements in blood glucose control. It also allows freedom to choose what and when you want to eat and the flexibility in terms of varying the timing of your meals and snacks. There are loads of resources to help with carbohydrate counting. For example, there are books like the Carbs and Cows book, portion lists, apps, food labels, and you can use your scales and portion pots to help. You may have heard some common terms in relation to carbohydrate counting. The insulin to carbohydrate ratio is the individual glucose response to carbohydrate. This is how much quick acting insulin is needed to cover the rise from carbohydrate. The insulin sensitivity factor or correction factor is the individual glucose response to quick acting insulin. So how much one unit of quick acting insulin will lower the glucose by. So an ISF of one to three means one unit of quick acting insulin will reduce the glucose by three millimoles per liter. We say individual glucose response to carbohydrate and to insulin because everybody's digestive system works differently and everybody's response to insulin is different. There are different methods used by individuals in terms of carbohydrate ratios. Some people change the units of insulin for every 10 grams of carbohydrate or one carbohydrate portion, whereas others will change the grams of carbohydrate for one unit of quick acting insulin. The table below shows some common insulin to carbohydrate ratios and the different ways that these can be recorded depending on which method is used. If you're new to carbohydrate counting, then to work out a starting ratio, you can use a number of methods. Some people use the total daily dose of insulin, whereas others will use body weight. It's important to remember that this is just a starting guide and that they will need reviewing, especially because insulin to carbohydrate ratios can be different for different times of the day. If you're unsure where to start, please speak to your diabetes team who can support you with your carbohydrate counting. Typically, 10 grams of carbohydrate or one carbohydrate portion raises the glucose by two to three millimoles. And one unit of quick acting insulin will lower the glucose by two to three millimoles. But again, individual responses do vary. So it's important that you work out how the carbohydrate you eat and the insulin you take works for you. Underestimating carbohydrate or forgetting to inject or bolus for a snack will lead to raised glucose levels whereas overestimating the carbohydrate content will lead to lower glucose levels and may result in hypoglycemia. So let's look at how we actually work out a dose of insulin. So we've got an example of spaghetti bolognese with garlic bread. The carbohydrate is coming from the pasta and the garlic bread. And we've estimated that there's about 60 grams of carbohydrate in the pasta and 20 grams for the garlic bread. So 80 grams of carbohydrate in total. The pre-meal glucose is 12 millimoles per litre. The insulin carbohydrate ratio is one to 10 grams or a one to one ratio. And the correction factor is one unit to lower the blood glucose by two millimoles with a target glucose of six. So for the food, we need to take the total amount of carbohydrate and divide that by the insulin to carbohydrate ratio. So 80 divided by 10 gives us eight units for the food. We then need to drive that pre-meal blood glucose into target. So the target, needs to be taken away from the 12 and then divided by the insulin sensitivity factor to give us the amount of units to deal with the correction.
So eight plus three gives us 11 units that's needed to one, cover the food, but also get that glucose back to the target range. And ideally we want to be injecting or bolusing for this 15 to 20 minutes before eating, which is something that we cover in some of the other modules in more detail. So let's look at how the Freestyle Libra can help. Well, you can set up the Libra Reader to become a bolus calculator to support with the maths of carbohydrate counting. Now this does require a blood test rather than a scan before the meal. And then you would enter the amount of carbohydrates, either in grams or carbohydrate portions, depending on what you choose to use. And then the reader would select a dose or suggest a dose based on the insulin to carbohydrate ratio, the insulin sensitivity factor, and the target that you have set in the meter. There are other bolus calculator apps available, and it might be worth speaking with your diabetes to team to see which ones they would recommend. The Freestyle Libra can also help because now you've got more insight into how the carbohydrate you're eating is affecting your glucose levels. You can now see what's happening after eating. And you can use this information to make changes to the amount or types of carbohydrate eaten, to determine the correct dose or the correct insulin to carbohydrate ratio, and to take the insulin at the appropriate time. So ideally getting that insulin in up front of the meal. So to conclude, carbohydrates have a direct effect on blood glucose levels. Glycemic index determines how quickly and significantly they affect the, the glucose levels. And it's crucial to understand carbohydrate counting to achieve optimal glucose control. The Libra provides information, more information than traditional blood glucose testing, but it's not just the amount of carbohydrate that matters. If you want to learn more, please see module two online on fat, protein, and the Freestyle Libra. Thanks for watching.